After two years of mixed results, a call went out for Lou Saban. A personality change was in store for the Buffalo Bills. While the rest of the AFL polished gadget plays, Buffalo's number 70, Tom Sestak, concentrated on no frills defense. The 1962 draft produced linebacker Mike Stratton, a fixture for the next decade on AFL All-Star teams. George Sains was voted the league's outstanding safety four straight seasons, a heady player who rarely made a mistake. Number 66, Billy Shaw of Georgia Tech, became a guard of all pro dimension in either league. And from Canada came Carlton Cookie Gilchrist, a thundering runner and irrepressible character. Tiny Bluffton College's contribution was Swift receiver Albert Golden Wheels to Benyon. And the final piece of the playoff puzzle was quarterback Jack Kemp, who directed the Bills' offense with imagination and daring. Buffalo's combination of creative offense and uncompromising defense carried the Bills to a 12 and 2 regular season record. But Kemp and his young Bills had something to prove. We were considered a team that couldn't win a big game, although we had just beaten Boston in a very big game a couple weeks before. Uh, we had a good team, but no one really thought we were mature uh, enough to win the championship. For me personally, it was a chance to play against the old uh, Chargers, the team from which I had uh, come. So it was kind of a chance to prove myself uh, to those who, for one reason or another, uh, I thought made a mistake. The day after Christmas, 1964. Buffalo's resolve was as rock hard as the turf in aging War Memorial Stadium. Tobin Roat's early touchdown pass staked the flashy charges to a quick lead. The stage was set for the hit heard round the pro football world. The Stratton just really laid uh, my friend Keith Lincoln out flat. And, uh, it just You could just see the emotion and the passion and the credibility of the Buffalo Bills come together at that point. A wounded Lincoln was helped from the field, and momentum changed sides as Gilchrist pitched in 122 yards rushing. Jack Kemp orchestrated four scoring drives, and the Bills won the AFL championship 20 to 7 in only their fifth year of existence. A year later, in San Diego's Balboa Stadium, the Bills and Chargers staged a championship rematch. Buffalo's defense smothered the explosive San Diego offense, and the Bills cruised 23 to nothing to a second consecutive title. Butchbird's memorable 74-yard punt return was the knockout punch as the Bills stood alone at the AFL Summit once more. In 1966, the Kansas City Chiefs were the only hurdle between the Bills and a third straight AFL title. This one to be rewarded by a trip to Super Bowl I Running back Mike Garrett and company ruined Buffalo's championship run in a 31-7 game that rudely shoved the Bills into reverse. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Wait a minute. Start it. Hold on. Hold the phone. Right now, I'd like to have some very special guests come up here. Some of the greatest yep. guys All right, you we've ever seen you on the Great Hill. You're very special. Don't Great football you. players. The only guys that ever won the Get championship the for the Buffalo sports fans. The Super Bowl teams were there back in the 90s, but they never brought home the bacon. These guys in 64 and 65 came back with two championship rings. First, our great tight end, the guy who won the game or helped win the game in 1965 when Glenn Bass, Albert DeBinion were injured and Cookie Gilchrist was sent up to the Yukon. <laughs> the great Ernie Warlick. Yeah! Hey, hey, Tom. Just, just one 
another thing. You want to know why he was a player and I was the announcer? Look at the size of our hands. Ernie, put it out here. Yeah. All right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay. Oh, hey, okay, next I'd like to introduce, introduce one of the greatest defensive linemen we ever had. A guy who played with the likes of Jim Dunaway, Ron McDowell, and the great, the ever so great, Tommy Sestak. Our defensive end, our great defensive end, Tippy, Tommy Day. Take his hands up big. Where are you guys? <laughs> there you go. Be no over there. Okay, next, I'd like to introduce the great center on that 1964-65 team. One of Hamburg's own, the great, the ever so great, Alvin Miller. I can still run. <laughs> That's because he didn't do anything on the line. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that why he can't run. <laughs> why he still can run. Another great center from that team. Well, no, wait a minute. We ain't going that far. <laughs> okay, he's first in our hearts. Mr. Robert Smith. Come on. <laughs> okay, next. Back in 1968, we had a few problems on the Buffalo Bills. We lost a few quarterbacks. Actually, some are still lost. <laughs> but we had one guy who took over. He was referred to as our disaster quarterback. And he proved himself. Time and time again, he was great. But he was also great as a flanker bank back in 1964 and 65, especially in the 65 championship game. Our great Erie County Executive of years gone by, Mr. Eddie Rakowski. Now, one of those strings hanging over your legs. Uh, yeah, yeah. You never knew we were there, that's for sure. Okay, next, I'd like to introduce from the offensive line from the teams of 64 and 65, one Mr. Bobby Dugan. Take your helmet off. <laughs> On your <laughs> Bobby was one of my great teammates over in the beach back in the late 60s, early 70s. He had some good times. Okay, uh, no, I'm going to get Okay, next, number 48. Today he introduced himself as Pete Mills, but I knew him as Sullivan Pete Mills. Sullivan. 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 We knew him as Skeeter. Skeeter. Skeeter left. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. They ran him out of town. Okay, another guy. He had to beat the road Another guy road who check. left. I'm sorry. I only wish he was here so I could introduce him. He was the quarterback of the defensive team, our great linebacker, Harry Jacobs. Yes. How about a hand? He came to eat. He came to eat. He had a religious experience. Next, the guy. <laughs> A guy that kept this team going. He kept him going from 1960 until 1997. He took care of the likes of Bruce Smith, Jack Kemp, Tommy Sestak, Ron McDowell, Billy Shaw, Mike Stratton. He even helped keep Lincoln off the team. All of them. They're all dead. You ever so great? Anyone else? Yes. Come on, Al, come on. Oh, that was good. 
to tell you, when he signed out of Notre Dame, we, we the Bills played a, a game down in eastern Pennsylvania. Kingston. 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 Close to your hometown. Yeah. His right. hometown. And, and, you know, and Eddie, of course, was an unbelievable player, but tell him about your bonus. <laughs> <laughs> tell him about your bonus and what you did with the money. Right. Here we go. It's a true story. I signed for uh, $7,500, called my mother up, and she said, oh, yes, I said, you're, you're rich. I said, not only that, Mom. They gave me a bonus to sign. She said, what's a bonus? I said, they give you money to sign. I said, how much did they give you? I said, $300. I said, what do you want? She told me I bought her a new pair of false teeth for 150 bucks. <laughs> and I took the other 150, went down to Fort Lauderdale for spring break, came home with 25 bucks in my pocket. I said, yes, I'm rich. <laughs> you know what? Today, today, Eddie still goes down with 150. <laughs> 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 Oh, these guys were family. Yeah. They really were. Billy Shaw, I think uh, Eddie made what eleven thousand dollars. Yeah. And you're and and he's in the hall. He's in the hall of fame. There you you know. And and Tom Day, God, they paid him thirty three hundred, which was overpaid. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that was a good consummate. Uh, but Tom, I had Tom, Gallagher eating tums from the right. negotiation. Tom went from uh, you know an uh, uh, offensive lineman to a defensive lineman, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> And Al, of course, the center, I mean, they're all, you really wonder why they last so long. He never played center in a championship game. Well, no, that's right. And he's, <laughs> but the centers are stupid because the blood runs down. <laughs> when they bend over, the blood runs into their head. And they yeah, all, you're right. And the right always, is, too. <laughs> Always have the quarterback hands on their ass. So you gotta be a little, you gotta be a little suspicious. Of it. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> you never mind it. <laughs> but you know, and I and I proudly wear the '64 and '65 championship rings. But uh, you know, and Eddie would have been a great Eddie. Uh, you know, Abramowski would have been a great player. He, he, he bummed up his knee where at Purdue, and, or he would have played in the pros. But, you know, this this was family in 64 and 65. You know, it, 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 was, it wasn't like it. It wasn't all about money in those years. It was about teamwork. <laughs> you know, it was about, you know, just so many wonderful things. And I can remember the trip. Remember, we went out to the coast. Don't go. No, no. no, no. We took care of each other. <laughs> That's it. You don't want to hear. We took it. No. 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 We all went to a movie together. But, you know, it, it was just, yeah, right. you know, Debbie does it was incredible. <laughs> a great oh, experience to be, you know, to be part of these guys. And this man right here, I'll tell you, our host yes. is an all pro. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Van, I can tell you he wasn't playing football then. Look at this. <laughs> well, I, of course not. Yeah. But any of you guys have any stories, Tommy or, or Ernie? Do you want to talk about any? Remember, remember the uh, 65 game in San Diego, 23 nothing. Remember that they went to the two tight ends. Right. Yeah. Ask Eddie, <laughs> hey, man, man, ask Eddie uh, Mikowski how we got the number one draft choice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keep this thing in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what are you doing? 
Yeah, keep your fingers off. There it is. Keep your fingers out of there. Right there. Right there. Oh my god. That really goes back to the arcade. <laughs> that goes back further than me, son. Or if you want to stay, you can come over. Where's that go home? I'm ready. I'm going to get a picture of all of you with her and the crew that's cooking together today. Well, Joan, you've got to get in here, too. Come on, Joan. Come on, Joan. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, Joan. Joan. Joan, stand. Don't get in on us. Come on, Joan. Come on, Joan. Come on. Get in. Come on, Joni. Oh, let me get back in the corner. Uh, there you go. And, uh, and let me make one more appeal. <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> Give him a steak. Take your pictures. Give that man a steak. Hey, come on, boys. In the come on, you two fellas. Come on. Oh, let me oh, the 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 steaks are burning. Hurry up. Come on. What do I do with this? No, you're going to get in the picture. Come on. Take a picture. How do I turn this on? Come on. One more appeal. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. He's like Van Miller. Can't stop him. Okay, I also want to bring up here a very select group of people. The wife and girlfriends of the great Buffalo Bills we have standing here. Sounds good to me. All right. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. No, no, don't wait. you do this, you guys might get lucky tonight. Come on, rookie, rookie year. <laughs> we got your rookie card. <laughs> come on. Don't take watch with him, I guess. Jamie. Uh, come, come on, on Wanda. 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 He's here for a picture. Wanda. Here for a picture. Wanda. The crew. The crew. Wanda. I don't know whether to kiss you or salute you. We can do either. Hey. Either or <laughs> all of the above. Don't salute just Where's your dad. Where's yeah, Okay, how about there. a nice round of applause? Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. Come on, Jamie. She's hustling cars. Jamie. She's hustling cars. That's what she's doing. Watch your right shoulder. Most of us are with our same wives, I think. Yes, we are. Not quite. Robbie, he's on his That's Come on, come on. What's the weather forecast? I know, you're up. I'm going to take a picture of the man. All right, who's taking a picture? Come on, Robbie. 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 Come on, Thank you. Okay. That's all right. That's a good idea. Oh no, they have them down there. Okay. There's one. There's one more cook. I think they. I think they be cooked now. They gonna call. This thing's going to happen in September. We just need to, like, buy it. Business with Barry. Business with No, that's not him. A really funny guy. I want one of the pictures of other guys. See that? What do you want? Why? <laughs> hey -o. It's not our arm. They can hold it down. I did. I'm rolling. There's nothing in the window. There you go. Okay. Okay. Hey. There it is. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll let you. Thank you very much, my friend. Get your coffee, man. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, last but certainly that I've admired for years. Not only have I admired them, but my family, my dad, my mother, my brother, they all love them. And this man has brought a lot of happiness and a lot of. Uh, oh, now I'm lost for words. And I didn't think I'd be lost for words.
not joy, but a lot of great entertainment and emotion to the world of football. I'm talking about Van Miller, who's given us so much electricity. When he, he puts us right at the game. And Van... Get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Al B. Miller, isn't it sad when cousins marry? <laughs> Hi, Ben. I want to tell you, I love this man. You know, let's hear it for Tom Eggert, the greatest host in the world. And a man who has an appreciation for the older people in, the, in this business. My social security number is four. <laughs> I was a busboy at the Last Supper. Thank you, man. Coming from you is an honor. No, no, wait a minute. You gave Weinstein nuts? <laughs> well, his nuts are small, but anyway. You should have given him the Viagra. That's what he really needed. Well, I thought you did back at the Hall of well, Fame back did, in 98. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he still got him. Wait a minute, Tom, you heard that story about the guy that goes to the... Excuse me for talking while you're interrupting. <laughs> Listen, buddy, you want to get into show business, get an, a get, get an agent, quit handling yourself. But anyway, so this guy, no pictures, I told you, no pictures. <laughs> So the guy goes to the doctor, he said, doctor, can you help me with my sex life? And the doctor said, have you tried Viagra? And uh, the guy said, no, can you get it over the counter? And the doctor thought for a minute, he said, well, maybe if you took three at one time. You know. <laughs> man, you never seem to amaze Oh, never mind, I love this man. <laughs> Okay. Tell them the story about uh, Ted Williams. No, well, I, I will later on. Later, right, on. later on. Later on. Okay. Where the hell's the food? <laughs> As everybody knows, Van is yeah, yeah. from Dunkirk. He's Dunkirk's right. true native son. That's right. And the people from Dunkirk have something special for you, Van. Do they really? Yes. Well, you know, when I went to school there, we used to have a sign in the library, and it said, Please don't shoot your gun in the library without a silencer. Some people are trying to study. This was a tough town. You know. But okay. anyway, from Dunkirk. From Dunkirk, I want to present the president of the Dunkirk Historical Lighthouse, the president, Mr. Dick Lawson. Oh, hi, Dick. Hi, man. How are you, Dick? Nice to see you. Okay, currently, the Dunkirk Historical Lighthouse and Museum is pr trying to bring in, and we're going to bring it in, the ARL, what's the, 24. 24, USS Finks into Dunkirk Harbor. And Dick right now is going to give you a few words on the campaign. Well, this is the last surviving ship of uh, everybody in World War II always heard about the battleships and the cruisers and aircraft carriers, destroyers. Got two days. Us guys never got the, the honor and credit for it. We were on a, what they call an LST, a large, slow target. <laughs> we carried everything from the kitchen sink to probably uh, those nuts that Herb Weinstein's carrying there. Uh, we put 3,500,000 troops ashore, plus all their food, medical supplies, and all the machinery to, to fight the war so we could be free. Fortunately, this is the last surviving one out of the 1,300 that they built. It's, uh, it was taken out of commission in the 1990s in the Watball fleet. But we're saving it from being scrapped. It's got 12 battle stars serving from World War II, Korea, Vietnam. Uh, the last thing was in 1985. It was a drug surveillance ship off the coast of Columbia, South America. I'm working very hard with us on it, and a few other people, Ray and everybody else. We've been involved calling long distance phones and everything and finally we got we had we hoped to head hope for Mr. Quinn to be here today but and Mr. Reynolds, uh, and Mr. Reynolds but unfortunately they're been called back into a session of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all you have to say about that we'll keep you informed Mr. Reynolds beaming that voice all over western New York and giving us all the joys and thrills of when we can't attend the games and uh we hope the, the light of our beacon of our lighthouse will shine upon you and give you good health for the next 50 years. Well, thank right. you. Thank you very much. I'm very... And in there... Right, well, thank you. Yeah. In there, we'd like to make you an honorary Listen. lighthouse keeper. Oh, thank you. 
and this is oops. Oh, look at right that. here. That's, that's beautiful. Dunkirk Lighthouse that's Keeper. Beautiful. That's beautiful. From the people, Thank you. your yeah. friends in Dunkirk, the yeah. lighthouse. That's well, yours. Man. You know, years ago when I was uh, in Dunkirk, uh, every every midnight at the stroke of midnight, they had a they had a, a, a clock in there that would gong off 12 times. And there was a light. The lighthouse keeper lived in the lighthouse at that time. And this one night, for the first time in 30 years, there was no sound. It never went off. And the guy woke up. He said, "What was that?" <laughs> but I am. I'm proud. I'm proud to say that I am from Dunkirk. I did play football there. As a fullback and a linebacker, I was better than B. Miller, that's for damn sure. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, Al, in my career, in my career, I put three people in the hospital. <laughs> all of them in the maternity ward. <laughs> <laughs> but it is great to be here. And uh, it's always a wonderful party, and I love this man. Let's hear it for Tom Egger. First of all, <laughs> okay, my next announcement is I'd like to make mention of a very close friend I have here today. He's going to entertain us. His name is Johnny D. And Johnny's been entertaining the people of Western New York since the 1950s. And currently, he's performing, he's singing out at Time Out out in Clarence on Wednesday nights, the Italian Village in. Uh, Amherst on Friday nights, the Flying Tigers in Amherst on Saturday nights, and Jimmy's Corners in West Seneca on Sundays. And Jimmy is here from uh, Jimmy's Corners. Where is Jimmy? Uh, where are you? That's Jimmy. He's owner of Jimmy's Corners, a great restaurant, great food, great entertainment on Sundays, Saturdays, you name it. Jimmy's a super guy. But anyway, Johnny's going after after we eat. Johnny's going to sing, and this guy he sounds just like Frank Sinatra, Dion. Uh, what's his name? The Diamond guy, uh, Neil, Neil Diamond. Yeah, that guy. Uh, and uh, and another guy, uh, Perry Como. Yeah, him too. But anyway, he's great, and he's going to entertain you. And this guy is super. So give him a, 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 raw, a long uh, round of applause for Johnny D. Let's hear it. Johnny, where are you? There he is. For those who can't see him, he's over there. <laughs> Okay, and I've also uh, been asked by a good friend of mine from Niagara on the Lake, John uh, Kronos, to give out some uh, pamphlets on their upcoming Dixieland Ragtime Festival, which is going to be in Lewiston. Excuse me, it's going to be in Queenston, Ontario, uh, the last of uh, August. So, if anybody here are Dixieland or Ragtime fans, I'll give you the pamphlets and all the information. Feel free to take them. And inside, there are pamphlets on a Dunkirk Lighthouse. Please feel free to take those. Did I forget anything? Oh, one more thing. I also wish to acknowledge some very good friends of mine. These guys, I introduced them a couple years ago from the Buffalo Bills, the championship Buffalo Bills teams of 64 and 65, Ernie Warlick. His whole career with a quarterback hands on his ass. <laughs> and these guys didn't do steroids. <laughs> Okay, the great 1964-65 Buffalo Bills championship team. The crew champions. Give him another round of applause. These guys are great.